I love building walking robots and this is part two of my hopefully balancing strand beast project and the idea of this project is to see if we can get a legged robot that walks along to balance in the same way as a two wheel balancing robot so basically moving faster or slower in each direction to catch itself as it falls just like a human walking. I've built quite a few walking robots in the past including my Star Wars gonk droid Robot X which could just about walk on two legs and Mini Dog, which can dynamically walk and balance with only two feet on the ground at a time. But I never treated forward locomotion in the same way as some of the two wheel balancing robots I built. So for this project, I'm building a simple mechanical leg mechanism based on Theo Jansen's Strand Beasts. This uses a simple four bar link mechanism to achieve a legged walking motion. Normally there would be two sets of legs opposing each other to make it stable, but in my version I'm going to use just one set of legs in an attempt to make it balance just like a two wheel balancing robot. Last time I built the main mechanical assembly for the strand beast with a single row of legs, and this time we're going to put the motors in and some electronics hopefully to make it balance. But just before we get on with that, it's a quick ad for ways you can support the channel that really makes all the difference to the projects. I have Patreon and YouTube channel membership and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and also get sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and be involved in all that discussion. I have a merchandise store where I now have mini dog t-shirts and various other merchandise including bags, socks, stickers and mugs and of course all those old designs as well such as open dog and performance robots. There's also some affiliate links in the description and if you use those to sign up for something it won't cost you any more but I'll get some money. So we've got our leg mechanism here which turns the legs and each side of the robot is independent so hopefully we can set one side going faster than the other and if all works well, we'll be able to steer. Since last time I fitted the drive pulleys on here, which are T5 printed pulleys, and last time we put these bridge pieces on and I was gonna mount the motor directly above it with the drive belt. I'm gonna be using a pair of these brushless motors though, which are 5055 Turney G Aero drives, and these are 280 kV, but putting them right here is gonna bring that mass back away from the legs. So what we actually wanna do is bring them forward a bit so I'm gonna make a new bracket to mount these on. And of course this is massively back heavy at the moment because there's only one row of legs and we have to have the rotary mechanism on this side. So anything we build this time has to bring the mass more forward here, including a massive overhang probably to hold the battery so that it naturally balances on the center of gravity above the legs. So I made a couple of other similar brackets here and we made this plate here to mount the motor and that fits into this rather larger recess and that means we can just reprint the motor plate to get the belt tension right rather than reprinting all of it. So after a bit of trial and error we've got a plate that fits and that belt's tensioned okay so even if I lock the mechanism with my other hand the belt doesn't slip too easily and of course the whole mechanism here will move backwards and forwards on the rails anyway so we can tension that up if we need to. So we just need to print the other side and then we've got some other bits and pieces to make mainly the electronics box for the O-Drive brushless motor driver, the electronics themselves for controlling it and the battery mount on a stick so it ends up looking a bit like this which is a sort of weird alien creature looking thing. So I've got both motors mounted now and we've got these encoder mounts as well so we can put the encoder on which is an 8192 CPR encoder and that'll allow us to position the motor really accurately or drive it to a specific velocity. Round on the front here this big red box contains an O-Drive Robotics brushless motor driver which controls the two brushless motors and it'll read the encoders as well so that it'll actually deal with the positioning or velocity control. And you'll notice it's now standing up by itself, at least switched off, statically stable, with the feet posed in a particular place. And that's due to this big boom here with a battery on that brings that center of gravity right over the front. Obviously when it runs and it picks one foot off the ground, it's going to have to run really quick to go and catch itself because it'll be balancing on just one foot, or at least two feet, 
at each end of the robot. So I think tuning is going to be quite difficult because the centre of gravity is going to change as the feet move. I've wired in the O-drive here with the power cables to the motor, a battery wire that goes to the top, and we've also got the encoder wires, and these are a bit too long, so I've just looped them up here for now. I'm not going to cut them down in this in case I want them longer for another project. If it works out really well, then we'll make some custom ones. Up the top on this stick is the battery here to offset the load, so it'll stand up statically at least, and we've got the electronics. And that consists of another battery with a 5 volt regulator just to power the electronics, a Team C3.2, which is doing all the control, and an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit, and that measures the angle of tilt that we get, so we can make the robot respond in either direction. We've got a serial line there that goes down to the O-drive, and a number of switches. One of those is the initialization switch to initialize the O-drive. The other one is motor enable, so that we can turn the motors off without resetting everything. And we've also got this pot as well that allows me to set the zero point, so that just fudges the set point where we think zero is in the middle, so that we can basically make it balance perfectly, even if the IMU is mechanically at a different angle. But will it balance? Well, let's power it up and see. It's quite wobbly, so I think there's probably going to be some issues there, but let's see what happens. One of the problems, among many, many others, is that this piece is quite flexible and this stick is flexing, and that's causing wobble side to side, and that's mainly as the feet are hitting the ground unevenly. So what I've tried to do is start it up so these two are in sync and these two are in sync, and then they should hit the ground at the same time, but obviously there's no compliance, so when it hits the ground it's causing wobble, and that's causing this whole thing to oscillate, and the whole thing's going crazy. So I'm gonna tie a string on in a triangle to keep this stick straight, and we'll see if that's any better. So I've tied on a bit of paracord there, which is nice and tight, and that's now much less wobbly, apart from the legs, of course, but at least this piece isn't flexing. So it almost works, it's been very hard to tune to get it to balance and it's almost impossible to get it to balance on the spot, but if I set the pot so it thinks it's tipping over and it always walks in one direction, then it can just about walk for a short distance. It only works in one direction, if I try and make it walk in the other direction then it trips over its feet for some reason, which is probably down to the geometry of this strand beast mechanism. And of course if it tips too far in either direction then it can't pick its feet up enough, and then that's where you hear that horrible belt skipping noise when the mechanism jams. However, even though I started the feet up in sync in pairs, if they lose sync due to belt slippage, so then the four feet are slightly out of phase, that seems to actually help it quite a bit. So that means there's more feet on the ground at one time, even though it's across the whole of the body of the strands beast. So it'd be much better, of course, if we had lots of feet on each side, and I think that's probably going to be the only solution to making it work. And of course the balancing point of the whole robot is changing as the feet are coming on and off the ground, whether the back foot lifts off or the front foot lifts off, that's going to make it fall backwards if the back foot lifts off, even though it was walking forward and it was picking that foot up to take the next step. So I think having more feet in contact with the ground will give more of a consistent balancing point, just like a wheeled robot, so probably we need a couple of extra pairs of legs on the end.
Well, that's about the best I can get it to balance. It still doesn't go in the other direction, so it's impossible to have it stay on the spot and balance around the zero point because the feet get mashed if it goes the other way due to the mechanical assembly, I think. So I always have to keep it moving in one direction. It's been really tricky to balance up the physical balancing point. I've got some more ballast in the form of another battery added here to offset the extra mechanics we put on the other side when we put the legs on. It's been very hard to balance that up with the virtual balancing point of the IMU so that the legs are kind of level on the ground and they don't trip over themselves and it keeps moving in one direction. If the gain of the controller is too much, it does eventually catch itself and that causes it to stop and fall back the other way basically, but it can't really do that, so it just falls backwards, and that's because I reduced that velocity to stop the legs getting jammed. So it always has to keep moving in one direction. We're in the middle of lockdown at the moment, so I don't have any other space to test it at the moment. It's a meter wide now, so ideally I'd like to take it over to the warehouse at Cool Components again, where I tested my Sonic the Hedgehog robot, but that's gonna have to wait for now. I'm pretty sure I could steer it by adjusting the speed of each side of the robot while it's going forward, but there's not really space in this room to do it, so that's going to wait for now. It will have to keep walking in one direction though, because it can't stop and turn on the spot, so it has to keep going forwards and slowly increase one side to steer. Tuning has been really difficult, even with the offset load there and the ballast and everything else, and trying to get that IMU point in the zero, we've still got a PID controller that's reading that inertial measurement unit and making the motors react in response to how far it's tipping in each direction. Normally with a two-wheel balancing robot, we'd have a really high integrator gain on that controller, and that causes it to accelerate really quickly to its target to catch itself. However, in this case, that didn't really seem to work, so I had to turn that right down so it's almost the same value as the proportional gain. And I think that's due to the rotary to linear motion of the mechanism that we've got in this robot. So I think what's happening is the linear motion of the feet along the ground is decelerating at each end of the rotary motion of the gears and accelerating again in the middle. So as the motors spin faster, those feet are accelerating as they're hitting the ground disproportionately to, or not linearly at least, to the actual motor. And I think that already gives us quite a bit of acceleration, which is why I've had to turn down that integrator gain, but it's actually quite confusing. However, it does actually catch itself as it goes, so I'm pretty happy with that. The feet come round and it catches itself and it's doing it in response to how much it's tipping. One thing we have learned is that we probably need some compliance in the legs. Obviously, for a bipedal robot, we've got side-to-side -side stability as well. But if the legs are really rigid, and they hit the ground, then it's a really lumpy ride. And that's what we had before we put the extra legs on. Now it's a bit smoother because there's more legs, but ideally in a bipedal robot, or one with less legs, we're gonna need some compliance when the robot's quite big to take out all the lumps and bumps. So that's quite a good conclusion to draw from this as well. So that's all from this video. I'm gonna publish all the CAD and code as open source and you can find that on GitHub and the link is in the description to this video below. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then please do, and that'd be really nice. All right, that's all for now.